Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Because this was a jubilee meeting uh, celebrating a 25th anniversary, I took the liberty for my second talk to look back in what I know best, that is my own life, and to look at what has thrilled me mathematically. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I would even take the liberty of going a little bit more back than just 25 years. Um, it will be somewhat of a potpourri, uh, the extent to which you can uh, discover a common thread in it. But that's left to you. My first memory of mathematical excitement must have been in somewhere in 1938 or so, uh, as it was at the, at the age that my mother was giving me a hot bath. And I remember that I was very puzzled and annoyed by the fact that I could not determine the ratio of the sides of a rectangular piece of paper so that when you folded it just once that you would get a sh thing of the same shape. And I couldn't do this. I knew that that ratio had to be somewhere between one and two, obviously, uh, and it had to be symmetrical. And, but the only hint that I got from that symmetry was a ratio one and a half. And each time that I got one and a half, I uh, multiplied it by itself, and then I got more than two. And I knew I had, I had to have two, because I was just folding the paper. And I was very annoyed. Uh, until uh, my mother explained to me that this check that told me that one and a half was wrong was a way of finding the answer and that essentially you had to solve the equation x squared is 2. Um, well, she didn't use those terms, of course, since we were in the bathroom, but... <laughs> and. We didn't even, we didn't have pencil and paper, not even a piece of paper to fold. We, I don't know, maybe she has used uh, a towel, I don't know. But I still remember my excitement. That uh, by posing the condition that the number multiplied by itself would have a given product was a way of defining a number. First excitement. The second excitement, I think, was about ten years later, five, five years later, uh, and that was when I was confronted with the well-known argument that the 8 by 8 square truncated at the end of the diagonal, so it has still 62 little squares, that this cannot be covered by 31 2 by 1 dominoes. Uh, particularly if you try to demonstrate the impossibility by trying all possible ways and observing that none <coughs> of them works, then uh, you quickly come very much impressed by the power of the counting argument. And the counting argument is that indeed you should color this as a, as a chessboard, realize that, first of all, no matter how you place your dominoes, uh, they cover an equal number of white and black fields. However, the two fields removed have the same color, so in the, the figure that has to be covered there, the two colors don't balance and you can't cover them. I was very much impressed by that counting argument. And that was about... 43 or so. I'm making five-year jumps because now I am in 1948. Uh, A times B minus C plus B times C minus A plus C times 
A minus B. Under all standard properties of multiplication, addition and subtraction. What is the answer? Yes, thank you. A number of years earlier, I had been shown the proof that the altitudes of a triangle are collinear. And the argument is this. It's an ugly, very ugly argument, you see. Uh, here we have A, B, and C, and we have an altitude. And now we make another altitude. Yeah. Now, call this, bless you. Um, now, AC over BC is AC over BC, but both multiplied by the cosine of gamma, which we have here. And AC multiplied by the cosine gamma is DC, and the other one is EC. In short, triangle ACB is similar with DCA, and hence we have here a corner beta and there a comma uh, an, ang an angle alpha. Similarity of triangles. <coughs> uh, here you do it with the last one. And for the same reason, you will derive that um, this angle is beta. Hence, the altitudes of the big triangle are the angle bisectors of the small one. The altitudes of ABC are the angle bisectors of uh, FED. The angle bisectors go through a single point. That's trivial if you define them as uh, the uh, locus of points with equal distance from the sides of the angle. And hence, the altitudes of a um, triangle go through one point. Now, this is a very ugly proof. It's, it's very indirect. And moreover, if you really wish to prove it, of course, uh, you should also uh, uh, analyze that all this is OK for a uh, triangle with an obtuse angle. Uh, and I would like you to appreciate that uh, for a non-degenerate, for a non-degenerate triangle, uh, this is a proof of the fact that uh, the altitudes go through one point. You see, here we have an origin, and this is a vector a, and this is 